Okay, this is where we constructed the shear diagram of the spin. And we want to determine the moment diagram of the spin. To be able to determine the moment diagram, I need to determine the area under the shear. So I'm going to call them A1, A2, and so on to the end. Area 1 is a rectangle. The height of that is 2110 pounds. The length of that is 5 feet. So that would be 2110 multiplied by 5. And that would be 10,550 pound feet. If I want to determine how much is area 2, I need to determine where is the intersection of this shear diagram with the horizontal axis. Let's call that intersection as x. I'm going to show that x here. For determining x, knowing slope of the line, we can divide the initial value by slope. v1 is 2110 pounds, and w is 700 pounds per feet. And that would give us 3.01 feet. Area 2 would be 1 half of 2110 multiplied by x, which is 3.01. Okay, that's area 2. Now, I don't need area 3 and area 4 in this problem, but I'm going to calculate that because I want to complete the problem. Area 3 would be 1 half of shear force at that point, negative 3490, multiplied by the length. And length would be 8 feet minus x, and that one would be negative 87, 10 pound feet. Area 4 is a rectangle, so that would be simply 3490 multiplied by 2 feet. And the last part, which is again rectangle, and that is 1300 multiplied by the length, which is 5 feet. As we can see, area 3 and 4 are negative, the rest are positive. Okay, knowing these values, we can construct moment diagram in this problem. Let's do that together here. We start from the left side. There is initial value of 4,500. Because that is counterclockwise, that goes downward, so we have negative 4,500 stress at this end. So that would be the initial value. It is going to go upward linearly. How much would be the magnitude of bending moment at that point? At the left side, we know that the, neg the moment is MA, which is negative 4,500. How much would be the moment at that point? Moment here would be the initial value that we had, which is negative 4,500 plus area 1. Area 1 is 10,550. And that would result in 60, 50 pound feet. Now I'm going to move to the intersection of this shear with the horizontal axis. The moment would increase again. The shear diagram is positive, so it would increase to that point. Moment at that point would be 60, 50 plus area 2 would be 92, 25. After this point, the moment would start decreasing its value because area under the shear is negative. So it is going to go downward all the way, say, to this point. And the moment here would be the initial value of 92.25 plus area 3, which is negative, And that would result in 515 pound feet. It goes again downward with a constant slope, like a line, and the moment at the bottom part would be initial value, 515 plus area 4, which is 6450. The moment at the very right end would be 6450 plus area 5, and that would result in 0. Okay, so this is the way that we constructed the moment diagram. I told you that we don't need to calculate A3 and A4. Without that, we can determine what is the maximum bending moment in this case. How do we do that? We know that the maximum bending moment is always at the intersection of the shear diagram with the horizontal axis, right? So where are those intersections here? One of them would be at this point. That would be one possible maximum point. 
the other one would be here. If I want to determine the maximum point here, we have initial moment and we just need area one and two. Add them to the initial moment, that would give you the maximum possible. One option that is that one. The other option that we can look into would be starting from the right side. We know that moment at this side should be zero. If you add A5 to that, that would be another option. So we just need A5 or A1 and A2. This tip helps you to find the maximum moment faster. Now I'm going to go and calculate the bending stresses. The maximum positive moment that we have is 9225 at the middle of AB and maximum negative is negative 6450. Um, pound feet is not standard unit. I need to convert that into pound inches. So multiply that by 12 and that give us 10,550. Stress on top of the section is positive moment multiplied by distance to the top divided by I. Distance to the bottom in the problem that I have is given to be 5.8. So that would leave us the distance to the top as 15 minus that value, which is 9.2 inches. And I is given to be 13.48 inch to the fourth. The magnitude of stress that I would get in this case would be 756. Okay. Now we go and calculate stress on the bottom part. It would be 478. Okay. One of these two should be negative. How do we know which one is negative? How can we memorize which moment would produce positive and which moment would produce negative stress? Let me show you this figure. The positive moment would bend the beam like this. In this case, the top part of the beam would be compressed. So stress on top would be negative, stress on the bottom would be tensile, it is tension. A positive moment would always produce tension on the bottom, compression on top. The other one is negative moment. Negative moment would bend the beam like this. In this case, on the bottom part, we see compression and on top we see tension. But how can we remember the, sh the way the beam is deformed? Um, do you want to receive bonus points or do you want to receive penalty? So bonus points makes you happy. This one is positive and this one is negative. This is that you, the way that you can memorize which moment is positive, which moment is negative. We can use that for determining the sign of stresses. Okay, for positive moment, the beam would deform like this. On top, it would compress the beam. On the bottom, it would be under tension. Let me draw bending stresses in this case to make it more clear. This is the way that we look at the beam from side view. In this case, the stresses that we saw on top is negative, and that is negative 756. We know that the centroid is closer to the bottom and stress that we see on the bottom is tension which has smaller value because the centroid is closer to the bottom part. Now I'm going to do the same for the other moment, maximum negative moment. The maximum negative moment that we see here is 6450 which is going to be multiplied by 12 to convert that into pound inches. We use the same equation as we used before, stress on top and stress on the bottom. And I'm just going to write down the final answer. For this case, which one is positive and which one is negative? The top one is positive. Stress on the bottom is 334 and stress on top is 530. Now let's look into that in more details. Once we determine these two stresses, are they located in the same place of the beam? The first one that we calculated is for the maximum positive moment. Maximum positive moment is located here in this beam. So let's call this section AA. Where is the maximum negative moment that we see? Maximum negative moment is at here. So they are located at two different places, right? But 
if I have a beam that has a constant cross-section area and I want to design that against the maximum stresses, which one do I use? We need to make sure that everywhere in the beam is safe. So we go and pick up the maximum overall. Negative 756. So that is what I would report. If I want to report what is the maximum positive value, 530 PSI. So that's the final answer for this problem.